that. So please, you've got to give me at least three or four minutes. If word is leaked out that there is going to be a protest that's meeting in the vicinity, and they've got and you start asking about fur coats, this is that's okay. It's not because they could lock the doors and the whole thing could be aborted. No, no, I, it won't be like that. I don't know if I. Yeah, this, the thing is also, they, they, if you're engaging them about things that they don't want to hear about, and they don't want to hear about how that fur is made... I'm not they talking to them, Dan, about how the fur is made. Grow up. I'm going to be questioning them about the skirt. I would like to know some things about the skirt. That's normal. What kind of things, though? It does worry me. Don't worry. Don't worry. It'll be all right, Michael. Boys, okay. you know, before you were born, I was doing animal rights protests. <laughs> We've had to change our style because we're desperate to catch people's attention. I regret it. But if you switch on the nightly news, everything is reduced to the tiny sound bite. Everybody is obsessed with sex. They're obsessed with violence. I think the choice, which is very hard for us, is no attention or some attention. I think it's an act of desperation that we must use or there will be silence and nobody will know there is an animal rights movement. Back in the uh, early 1990s, uh, PETA had tried to meet with Calvin Klein at the time, he was a huge designer then, and he refused. And so eventually uh, several PETA members actually took over his office, much like today's protest, except it was in his office. Uh, the following week, he called our president and said, okay, I heard your message, let's meet. And they set up a meeting, and um, that same season, he banned fur from his collection. So that kind of action like, really has an impact. It has a history impact. of working. Yeah, it has an impact, and, um, and we hope that John Paul Gautier makes the same decision. Ingrid just has this philosophy of this mantra. She feels that there's no such thing as bad press. She'll say that all the time. She'll say she's a media whore. Today, I think the mission has become diffuse and really watered down by what I call the stupid human tricks. And that's where stupid things are done just for PR sake. It's those stupid human tricks that have been backfiring and have been hurting the credibility of the organization. Spectators got more than an eyeful during today's parade when some protesters decided to parade in their birthday suits. PETA and McDonald's are facing off tonight over what PETA is calling the unhappy meal. This is just not the way to get your point across. You don't attack children. My question was, do I have the right to hit them? 
if they frighten my children. The seven-foot carrot showed up at C.P. Squires Elementary School immediately surrounded by kids. A leaflet handed out by the carrot couple read, Hamburgers are really cows who have been separated from their families and killed. You guys like animals? They attacked the TV show Survivor for allowing people to eat rats. They encouraged college kids to drink beer instead of milk. And now they have mocked New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani's battle with prostate cancer. These billboards in Wisconsin satirizing the Got Milk ads with the caption, Got Prostate Cancer. I'm considering suing them because I think what they're doing is outrageous. I'm trying to exploit my illness. I think it would be outrageous if they tried to exploit anybody else's. You know, everything that has turned you off about PETA has come directly from Ingrid simply because she knows that by it, its shock value its shock value and attention the idea is that it brings attention to the issue the problem is it's so outrageous that it just brings attention to the fact that it's outrageous the intention is to get whatever attention they can by whatever means now that makes you good at fundraising perhaps or good at being a media slut, is it to be respected? Is that how you respect animals? Is that how you get a society to respect animals? I don't think it does a thing for animals. There are many times when the opposition hoists up PETA as the norm of animal welfare and says, you know, these are the animal welfare people, these are the things that they do, and that can't help. What surfaced all of a sudden in 2003, I believe, was a campaign by PETA comparing the slaughter of animals to the slaughter of the Jews. This was so hurtful. This was not only hurtful to survivors, um, but it was hurtful to, to just decent people. It trivialized what the Holocaust was all about. The Holocaust was the slaughter of the Jewish people. It was genocide. It was a plan. It was a strategy to destroy and eliminate the Jewish people from the face of the earth. And to compare this to very, very strong feelings about cruelty against animals, which is fine. But is this the only way that one can express this advocacy? Anybody who is stuck in traditional thought believes themselves separate apart, superior to all the other species on the face of the earth. And so I knew there was a barrier there. Unfortunately, sometimes that the only way you get discussion on the table is to do something jarring. But I still hold that the campaign is absolutely true, that we must get over ourselves and not live in the past, that we must open our eyes to the present. So the first thing on the order of agenda is to talk about the panels, which I've copied for all of you. And is this what we're calling it? What do we call it? Animal Liberation Display. Well, oh. that's our name internally that's our name for it. Are these panels definite or they can change? They can change. Clubbing. What kind of photo are we looking for on the clubbing? We well, there's one image one. that's actually not here of a slave man's leg in a chain and an elephant's foot in a chain. Oh, yeah. That would be great. Yeah. That would be very good. Are we staying away from Holocaust on this? No, not necessarily. Sure, We've got a super duper one. How about the anything? internment of Japanese Americans? I mean, that's 1940s. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good, good one. one. Mm -hmm. If we want to make the images bigger on some of these, we're going to have to cut text. And I don't know if anybody's really willing to. But the, t the quotes are extremely yeah. important. Look at this one about the captain gave the order. 54 Africans were chained together, then thrown overboard. Since it was permissible okay. to kill animals for the safety of the ship, they decided. It was permissible to kill slaves for the same reason. People forget, history is about five minutes ago last Tuesday. This, this is going to be a revelation to most oh, people. No. They have trivialized animal rights. They've exploited uh, racism and women in campaigns, um, using people as props to uh, project animal rights. And you can't do that. You can't sensationalize um, an issue involving a lot of pain, um, a racist issue, for example, and expect to advance an ethical cause in doing so. The, the uh, means don't justify the ends. Well, we've all crossed the line who are on the front lines. 
Um, if you don't cross the line sometimes, how do you know where it is? So it's, it's not the worst sin in the world to cross the line. To me, a much worse sin is to never even approach the line. The nation's capital woke up this morning to front page stories in the Washington Post and New York Times that the FBI has been conducting surveillance of mainstream protesters.